Good morning and thank you for joining us. We want to continue to thank all of our essential workers this morning. We are still praying for you and your family. We love and appreciate all of your sacrifices. The same for those who were directly affected by this. We are with you in spirit and are praying for you. We have received so many great reports of people that have recovered fully from COVID-19. Glory to God, say this after me, no fear here. I am victorious. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in love. God is love. Amen. Before we get started, check out our kids space and as well as our youth area on our website. If you're a youth, you know how to join in on the fun. Pastor Joel has set aside some time just for you. We have something for everyone. Now it's time to get our praise on and get ready for the word through Bishop Butler. Share this on all of your platforms, join in on the chat and enjoy service. We will not be shaken and we won't be moved. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. We're going to sing about it. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. Hey. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures 
been good to you? Has he opened doors for you? Hallelujah. Has he shown you favor? Has he been faithful to you? Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. He's worthy of praise. Mm. You are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you. Think about it. Think about it. Fifth, yeah. So good. You win. So good.
Welcome to Word of Faith. Let's take a look at some of the things we have going on this week. Early morning prayer will move to a live prayer call. Join us Tuesday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. as we pray for our family, our church, our community, and the world. Call 425-585-7183. Listen to the entire message over the phone during our call-in service times. Call 425-585-7183 on Sundays at 3 p.m. and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Kids World is here to provide lessons for your K through fifth grader. This week's lesson is called Memory, right at our website at wordoffaith.cc slash kidsworldresources. As a church, Word of Faith is always looking for ways to help those in our local community. Hospitals are in danger of experiencing a massive shortage of blood caused by the many blood drives being canceled due to the school, and other organizational closures related to the COVID-19 outbreak. To prevent this, we are partnering with the American Red Cross to help provide blood for our local hospitals. We're asking our church family and friends to make and keep an appointment to give blood to the American Red Cross. Let's put our faith in action by serving others. Go to wordoffaith.cc slash Red Cross to make your pledge today. Don't forget to share with your family and friends. Thank you, Word of Faith. What's up, youth? I want to remind you that we're continuing our weekly devotionals that have been made just for you. Now, today we'll be talking about knowing your purpose or discovering your purpose. So please make sure you check out the weekly devotions by going to wordoffaith.cc forward slash youth. And make sure you stay up to date by following us on Instagram at underscore glorify God underscore. I'll see you online. We care about you, spirit soul and body that's why we are pleased to host lifeline screening the nation's leading provider of preventative health screenings here at word of faith on friday june 12th these painless screenings go beyond your regular checkup to identify dangerous plaque buildup or blockage a major risk factor for stroke and heart disease 
The screenings are accurate, affordable, and will give you valuable information about your health that you can share with your doctor. A package of five screenings to identify risk for stroke, heart disease, and other chronic conditions will be offered for only $149 and takes just 60 to 90 minutes to complete. If you register today, you'll receive a $10 discount. For more information or to register, call 888-653-6441. Visit lifelinescreening.com slash community circle or text the word circle to 797979. Greetings, Word of Faith family. We will now begin holding weekend services back in the sanctuary. Beginning Saturday, May 16th, we will have three services. Saturday service will begin at 5.30 p.m. And the Sunday services will begin at 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Each service will have a maximum of 500 attendees to ensure proper spacing remains between individuals not currently living together. We'll have sign-up forms available to reserve your space, as well as a call-in number for those without access to the Internet. You must register to attend. For online registration, go to wordoffaith.cc slash service dash registration. For call-in registration, the number to call is 248-419-4933. You can find our safety guidelines and more information online at wordoffaith.cc. Word of Faith invites you to stay connected and up to date with us online at wordoffaith.cc. Check out our app and follow our social media platforms. In addition, be on the lookout for a daily word of encouragement from Bishop Butler. We will continue praying for you and your families until we can all be together again. Thanks for watching. Join us this week, Wednesday evening for midweek Bible service and next Sunday for our Sunday worship service. For more Word of Faith news, stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the Word of Faith app, and at wordoffaith.cc.
Praise God. Now that music blesses your spirit. Glory to God and gets you prepared for the word of God. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to receive the offering today. And so turn with me, if you would, to the book of Ecclesiastes, Psalm, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. And let's read chapter 11, the beginning with verse 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. If the tree fall toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth, that it shall be. He that observed the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones to grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. So in the morning sow thy seed. In the evening withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Now in this particular teaching, praise God, he particularly is talking about when you sow, amen. He, he uses several terms for it, including seed and bread. And he said, cast thy bread upon the waters, you'll find it after many days. In other words, that in time, that circle will happen. It will come back to you, praise the Lord. It tells you to plant in a varying different places and varying different ways because it has a, it is a hedge to help you in evil times. It says that the clouds be full of rain. I mean, if you, when you have been planting or you've been seeding, you have stored up a harvest, praise God. And guess what's going to happen? It said eventually that rain is going to fall. It's going to empty itself. And wherever it empties itself, whether it's the north, the south, the east, the west, or from whatever way in which that harvest will come to you, it shall. But then it warns us in verse 4 that he that just looking at the circumstance won't sow. He that reap, uh, he that uh, regard up the clouds shall not reap. In other words, you cannot reap a harvest if you do not sow seed. In fact, there are many people who want to reap but never sow. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains in Genesis 8:22, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Not harvest without time and without seed. He continues there to, to tell you, well, now you don't even know necessarily how everything works when a woman, of course, gets pregnant, how everything is about a child. Unless, unless today maybe you're a doctor, praise God. He said, you may not know how, but you know that it happens. And the same thing is true, he said. In verse 6, in the morning, he said, sow your seed then. And in the evening, don't withhold, praise God. Because you don't know which one of the seeds you've been planting has opened the door to what harvest of blessing comes your way. We want to say thank you for continuing to support us here at Word of Faith, getting the gospel out as we're con continuing to do around the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But not only have we been receiving seed, we also have been doing what the scripture says here. We've been sowing both internationally, sowing in some ways nationally, sowing locally, blessing other people and other ministries. We've been doing it to the poor at places like Detroit Rescue Mission, places like Gleaners Food Bank, praise God. We've sent money to uh, ministries, praise the Lord, that minister in other parts of the country. And the same thing overseas. We've been sowing seed because we believe what Ecclesiastes said, and even locally. We've even blessed our first responders. And uh, our church is located in the city of Southfield, and we have blessed every EMT fireman or firewoman, the policeman and policewoman, and praise God, even with a meal here in our city, first to say thank you, but also to allow us to plant seed into those who are serving us. And we are very, very grateful. There are five different ways in which you can give. First of all, if you're here in Southeast Michigan, our administrative office doors open 24 hours a day. We're located at 20,000 West Nine Mile Road, Southfield, Michigan. You can just drive right up into that office. There are offering envelopes there you can fill out, praise God, and a slot. You can put it right there in the door. Or you can give by text message by texting at 248 25490 you can give online by visiting at wordoffaith.cc slash giving. You can give by phone during regular business hours Tuesday through Friday here at 
4933. Or you can send it in just by regular mail. Once again, at Word of Faith International Christian Center, 20,000 West Nine Mile Road, Southfield, Michigan, 48075. You can just make it out to accounts payable, praise God, and uh, it'll get to the right place in the name of Jesus. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, God had Israel uh, to confess or to, to say when they planted their tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. Something to say before him. We call it a confession. In the New Testament, it's called a confession. Praise the Lord. We have a New Testament one that we do. Similarly, praise God. And so if you are sowing seed to us today, we encourage you to make this confession with us right now. That's right. Say it with us right now. Because we are titers, the windows of heaven are open and the blessing is pouring out. Because we are sowers, we are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive our perfect assignments, and I'm going to say right here, jobs and businesses, raises and bonuses, contracts, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates, inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, supernatural wealth transfer, scholarships, tuitions paid in full, bills paid off and debts demolished, royalties received and prophecies or businesses acquired. We are getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, our equipment and our aircraft. God is bringing into our hands seed. We command our abundant harvest to come. Abundant harvest, come to us now. Harvest angels, go get it and bring it to us right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And Father, thank you for all those who are faithfully giving tithes and offerings today. We thank you that what we've said comes to pass in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, before we get into the message today, praise the Lord, I want to uh, just say something to you. That is, uh, first of all, uh, on last night at our Saturday night service, we had our first open services again inside our building last night at, at 5.30 this morning at 8 a.m. And then after you watch this, there is an 11.30, praise God, service going on here at Word of Faith. Uh, amen. The message that I'm about to do now is not the one that we did Saturday night and, of course, on today. The message uh, we did uh, here inside the building is on the subject of the, the cause of the curse. You see, in the scripture, it tells you that the curse caused less does not come in Proverbs. Now, when you study the word, there's a particular reason why we are in this situation. In fact, there have been eight U.S. presidents from Richard Nixon right now to Donald Trump, excluding the very short time that Gerald Ford was in there, uh, who have made a biblical era that opened our country to pandemics and floods and hurricanes and all other kinds of things of the curse. Amen. And so I've not taught this message publicly before, even though I've known about it for years. But now I feel led of the Lord to share it with, with those who are here live with us. But you can get it by contacting us at eStore.wordoffaith.cc. That's eStore.wordoffaith.cc if you want to order that message and you can get it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Now, Father, as we go into the word today for this audience, we give you praise and glory and honors. We yield to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask you to word our mouths with, with your word accurately and without error. We're open, Lord, to whatever gifts, graces, anointings, manifestations, or demonstrations of the Spirit you see fit to grant us. And for whatever you do, Lord, we give you and you only all the glory, honor, or praise. We ask it in that holy, mighty, matchless, and highest authority of all, Jesus of Nazareth, by his precious blood, everybody said, amen. Praise God. 
Well, let's turn to Romans chapter 4, please. Praise God. Amen. We're ministering here on the subject in this session on faith, foolishness, presumption, and fear. Faith, foolishness, presumption, and fear. You know, there's a lot of information that's flying back and forth right now. And I mean, even of people who are uh, scientists, you have scientists right now who are trained in the same discipline, who have different views about how you or this nation should handle this pandemic. There are epidemiologists actually on both sides uh, who have, are looking at the same data and are coming up with different results on a whole host of things, everything from being inside, outside, mask, no mask, all kinds of things, praise God. The reason why uh, is because they don't fully know. They don't completely know what's going on, and they're trying to catch up with knowledge. The, you had, of course, uh, all of these uh, theories, and you had all these models that said one thing. Now, after weeks and weeks, you have hard data, and the hard data says one thing, perhaps, uh, amen, and yet at the same time, people interpret it different ways. I will tell you, if you are a Dr. Fauci, and if, if you are advising the President of the United States about a nation of 330 million people, or if you're uh, the Chief Medical Officer for the state of Michigan, uh, who uh, is advising a governor of 10 million people, the responsibility of that is just enormous. And what would you most likely do? Well, I think what most of us would do was that we would err. We're going to err. We're going to err on the side of caution. We're going to do and, and say that which is the safest thing to say for the vast amount of people. Praise God. And nobody would expect uh, or, and no one should negatively say anything about anyone who would make that decision. I've been in government. Uh, and having been one of 10 people at one time when Detroit was a, had a million citizens and I was one of 10 people that made the decisions for the city of Detroit, where you, I had to think about what was best for the million as opposed to 10 or 30 or 100, praise God. So, I mean, I get and, and I understand that, hallelujah. Uh, on the other hand, praise the Lord, you know, this whole issue of what you do as an individual in the middle of this, with all this contrary stuff is partially what we want to talk about today in the name of Jesus to help you make the right decisions from God's word. Now we said there's the subject of faith, foolishness, presumption, and fear. And so let's define them from the scripture. The word faith, the New Testament is translated from the Greek because Greek is the business language of that era when the Bible was written. Just like today, English is the business language of the world today. Now, Greek, of course, tells us that the word for faith is pistis. The word pistis means persuasion, praise God. It means conviction. It means assurance. It means reliance. It means belief. Okay. Romans here, chapter 4, verse 21, referring to the man called the father of faith, or Abraham, it says, and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, God was able also to perform. And so what it tells us here that Abraham came to the place of complete and total faith. The word said here he was fully persuaded. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then there's the, the Greek word for uh, foolishness, morals. That word foolishness in the Greek means something that is dull or stupid or absurd. So let's read some verses that talk about foolishness, what the Bible says about a few of them. There are, of course, many. But 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. To them is stupid, is absurd, is dumb. Uh, amen. 
but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And the Greek word for power is dudamis. Amen. Well, let's take a look at another one. Here in verse 25, same chapter. It says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Then you read verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. I'll read you one more, praise the Lord, chapter 3. And in verse 19, it says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And so there's what the world considers foolish, and then there's what God considers foolish, and they're not necessarily the same thing. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so we need to understand what the Bible is talking about, because we're teaching from the Bible, from God's word, what God considers to be foolish, praise the Lord, and what God considers to be fine and dandy, praise the Lord. Then, of course, there's the word presume, F-O in the, in the Hebrew. That word uh, uh, to presume uh, means to swell or to be lifted up. In Numbers, the 14th chapter, the 44th verse, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, praise God. And in the 14th chapter and in verse 44, we read here, but they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, smote them, discomfited them even unto Hormah. In other words, what happened here, the children of Israel made a mistake. They got to the promised land. And when uh, God had told them, I give you this land before they left, it's yours. So just go spy it out. Just go look at it. Praise God. Come give a report to the people. And it came back. And of the 12 spies, 10 of them brought a, what the scripture called an evil report. But the evil report was what they saw. Amen. They saw giants in the land. They saw walled, walled cities. They saw these people were bigger and stronger than they were, and they brought that back. And they said that to the people, and God called that evil. Then you had Joshua and Caleb who saw the same thing, and they said, oh, their defense is bread for us. God is with us. Let's go up at once and take it. Praise the Lord. And God was pleased by their statement. The people who listened to the ten, all died in the wilderness. There was only two who didn't die in the wilderness and was in that wilderness for 40 years, and that was Joshua and Caleb. Amen. But they got to live to the next generation. They got to go into the, form, into the promised land. Their uh, strength and, and health was the same as it was 40 years before, yet they both saw the same thing. Well, the children of Israel, uh, after they came to God and they said, they cried out and said, well, it's better that we had died in the wilderness than die here and be killed and all that. Amen. Then Moses came to them and, and told them what God said. God said, now because of this, you are not going to be able or allowed to go into the promised land, but you're going to spend the rest of your days in the wilderness till all of you die. And they changed. And they said, uh, okay, 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 we, we, we will go and, and we will do it. And this is, so they, they gathered up their stuff and they, they, they went to go fight. And then Moses said, no, don't go now. It's too late. God's not with you. And they didn't listen. They swelled up in their pride thinking, well, we can still do it. And we read what happened to them and many of them were killed. They died. So it, it became presumption. They, got, they became lifted up with pride. Then the fourth one there, phobos in the Greek, is the word fear. The word fear means to be alarmed or to be frightened, is to be uh, terrified. 1 John chapter 4, let's read the verse over there as we set this up in Jesus' name, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4, and let's read here with verse 18. It reads as follows. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because... Fear hath torment. 
He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And of course, the word torment there uh, tells you that an individual is filled with anxiety and worry and all those things. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we read in verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. And when the scripture is talking about sight, it's not just talking about your eyes. It's talking about your five physical senses, not just what you see, but also what you hear, what you touch, what you taste, what you smell, praise God, all of that. So he says, and of course, the word faith comes, Romans 10, 17, comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you could say it this way. So we walk by the word and not just by the physical senses. But what does that really mean when we say we walk by the word? and not by the physical senses alone. First of all, what every American and most people in the world are dealing with right now is an onslaught of fear-filled words. And those fear-filled words are having an effect upon them. Amen. And the kind of effect that they are having is that they are getting what Hebrews, in fact, I'm going to turn over there right now, Hebrews chapter 2 describes to us it says here praise the Lord uh, glory to God let's begin reading here in verse 14 for much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood Jesus also himself likewise took on flesh and blood that through death he might render of no effect him that had the strength of death that is diabolus or the devil and to deliver them who through, and underline this if you're, if you're taking notes, who through fear of death were all their lifetime sub subject to bondage or subject to that fear, subject to slavery. In other words, it determined how they walked in their life, fear of death. Now the fear of death, uh, there are people who have it every single day, and every day I want you to know before this pandemic came along, and after this pandemic is gone, every time you get out of bed, you risk death. I mean, death is out here. In 2019, for example, there was 1.7 million people in America who contracted cancer. In 2019, 606,808 of them died. There was 40,000 traffic deaths. In 2017, there were 616 people killed by law enforcement. There was 1,208 people who died during childbirth. There was 2,812 people who died who were exposed to smoke or fire and flames. There were 3,709 people who drowned. There were 4,459 complications, people who died from medical care in the hospital. There was 35,316 people who died from high, high blood pressure. There was 36,388 people who died by accidental falls. There were 64,795 people who died from accidental poisoning. We're not even talking about to mention really cr crazy ways in which people get killed, dog attacks, flying, de flying degree, uh, uh, debris, or as we've seen recently, you might be somebody just jogging and somebody kills you. In other words, death is out here every day. Every time you get up, you are taking a risk. Now, you can do one or two things. And that is, you can allow that fear of death to determine and keep you so uh, uh, caught up with it, with that fear of death, that it affects your life to the negative that you actually absolutely have none. Or you can be an individual, praise God, that gets the truth and the truth can make you free. Now, uh, I'll tell you one fear of death. I had a, <laughs> when this uh, church was a storefront church, it wasn't even a year old, just a few months. We had about, oh, not even quite 60 people yet, so I'm a rookie minister. The church has just started, uh, amen. Church is small, and the church, the church is that small. You know, everybody in the church, I knew everybody in the church. I had a member in the church uh, who had a fear of dying from driving. 
And so what I did with that member, I couldn't do that today, of course, but what I did with that member at that time was that I took them out and then showed them how to drive. And they had, had a particular fear of going down on the expressway. Now, this fear was keeping them from doing what's necessary for them to be able to feed themselves and their family properly. And so I got them up on a Saturday at five in the morning, drove them down on the expressway to confront that fear of death. After which, praise God, they've been driving ever since. And that, that issue is, 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 has been taken care of for now many, many decades. You also need to understand that even today, there are many diseases of which there are still no, no cure. I remember uh, when AIDS came out. Now, they didn't tell us about AIDS. This church was open in 1979. But in the 1980s, they didn't tell us initially about AIDS, although people were dying from AIDS and people had the uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Praise God. I'm a word man. I'm a, I'm a uh, Mark 16 man. God told me to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I've been laying hands on people as long as I've been in the ministry in the name of Jesus. I was laying hands on people, it turned out, that had AIDS. I didn't know they had it. Amen. Later on, the Lord, uh, uh, well, the society brought forth and began to tell us about AIDS and the medical profession did it and all of that. And when they first came out with it, they didn't know everything about it. So what did they do? They, they told us what they presumed, what they thought it was, how it worked. Later on, they changed that. But at first, we didn't know. Now, we had a school called Faith Christian Academy. We had a young girl that applied for the academy. Uh, she had AIDS. Her mother had AIDS. And I, I had a decision, because at this time, they weren't completely sure how AIDS was transmitted. So we didn't know if a person being in the room or uh, if a person accidentally uh, got swept from that person on, on another person, or all of the things for those of you who go back that far. Having a school, I had a decision I had to make. Do I admit this child into the school? What are the parents going to think? Uh, am I responsible for all the kids? Of course I am. But, but what about the rights of this young girl? Okay, should she be able to receive an education? And, and her mother. It was a very difficult decision for me to make at the time. I made the best decision possible based upon the incomplete information that was available at the time. And even right now, the information they have is incomplete. And it's going to be a while before they fully know everything. One of the reasons why uh, uh, they are talking about perhaps there could be a flare-up of this, they expect it to die down uh, in the summertime, but why they expect a flare-up of this is because in the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, the Spanish flu showed up in the United States in the spring, went away in the summer, and then in that October, came back with a vengeance, and most people who died, there was 675,000 people in the United States who died from Spanish flu in 1918, and the vast majority of them died on the rebound one that came in October. And this is why uh, the medical professionals are concerned about that you can have a reoccurrence of it once it gets away, or once it goes away. So we understand that. And so what I'm telling you is that, uh, praise God, is that this thing may go on for a very long time. And they may find a cure. They may not find a cure. They may came up, come up with therapies that work. They may not come up with therapies that work. But the one thing that cannot happen at some point, you can argue about when, but at some point, everyone cannot stay in their homes. So eventually, people will have to come out. Praise God. Cancers had billions of dollars spent to it, and they still don't have a full answer to it to this day. Praise God. Now, I'm, an, I'm a member of the, what the uh, epidemiologists are saying is the most vulnerable group in society here in America. I'm an African-American male 
who was over 60 years of age. And of course, I am male. And so what they have found so far, says the data, is that men are more susceptible. People 60 years of age and older are more susceptible. And African Americans are more susceptible. So I meet three. The fourth one, of course, deals with having underlying symptoms. I don't, as far as I know, have any underlying symptoms, but I did have them. And when they did crop up with me, I did the things both physically and spiritually to get, get rid of it. <laughs> Glory to God. And I am free of those things in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I say that be, because uh, as an uh, individual who's in that group, there's decisions that even I have to make and have made concerning these things. So let's talk about faith versus foolishness. What is faith? What is foolishness? Praise the Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 8, and let's read here with verse 10. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. He didn't notice what Jesus told this man, a centurion. Jesus said, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee, and his servant was healed from in that very self same hour. Now, there are different levels of faith. The Bible talks about here, Jesus described this centurion whose servant was healed as having great faith. What made it great? This man didn't need any evidence whatsoever that his servant was healed. All he needed was Jesus. If you say he's healed, he's healed. When I was in Israel some years ago, uh, they would talk to me and told me this story. They, they said that from where this man was with Jesus and Jesus said that to him to where his servant was, was 20 miles. And so whether he walked or took a donkey or a horse, however he got there, when he eventually got to where his servant was and inquired about it, he found out that his servant was healed from the moment that Jesus said it. And Jesus called that great faith and said, uh, this will be as you believe. But not everyone operates with that kind of faith. Amen. Turn to Romans chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. In the fourth chapter of Romans, uh, amen, once again, we're going back to Abraham and something what the scripture said about him. Romans chapter 4, let's read verse 19. And being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now he said, and being not weak in faith, but if you flip that around, praise God, take the word not out of the verse, it will tell you what weak faith is. Let's read it that way. And being weak in faith, he considered his own body now dead, despite what God said, even though he was 100 years old and he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb. And so weak faith then just considers the circumstance alone and doesn't give full credit to the word of God. Now, turn to Matthew chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is what I'm saying here, and I'll make this clear before, I'm, before I sit down here today. I am not in, indicting people in any way because people are at different levels of faith, and God has a different method for every person, wherever they may be, whatever their knowledge of information is, praise God whatever their commitment is. God has a way for them so that they can advance and, and can be blessed because everyone's not in the same boat. When it, God understands, praise the Lord, that there is not a one size fit all. Here in Matthew chapter 14, we read here, Peter, of course, is on, is on the boat and he says to Jesus, if this be you, Jesus, come and let me walk on the water. He walks uh, walks on the water to go to Jesus in verse 29. But in verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. So he started getting moved by the circumstance, even though he is walking on the water. Immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him and said, oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So we see strong faith, little faith, weak faith. Praise God. Now, hallelujah. So we see that there are different levels of faith and at different levels of faith, 
There are, of course, different ways in which God deals with individuals. There are different levels of and different way healing is provided from the word of God for people. James chapter 5, verse 14 tells us, if there, is there any sick among you? Verse 13 and verse 14 says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them anoint them with oil in the name or the authority and character of the Lord. Well, this is referring to an individual who was bed flask, an individual who calls for the elder of the church because they are unable to go to the elder themselves. When the elder comes, praise the Lord, the elder takes out the oil and begins to anoint them for this individual. Because remember who he's writing to, James writing to, he's writing to believers. These believers, when they have this oil put upon them, it is representing something to them. And what it's representing to them is the anointing, praise God. They need to feel that oil. They need to, to have those hands with that oil laid upon them. They need to hear that prayer out of the mouth of the elder of the church, and it helps their faith. Glory to God. That, that prayer is going to cause them to be healed. That is one way. Then you have Mark 16, Jesus said in verse 17 about believers that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, there's the ministry of laying on of hands. And in Hebrews chapter six, it says it is one of the principal doctrines of Christ. Praise the Lord. So that's another way. And again, that individual laying on of hands, that's a place where an individual decides that I'm going to release and believe as a point of contact. When that man or woman lays hands upon me in Jesus name, in Jesus authority, that between them and me and that point of contact, I'm going to release and I'm just going to decide to receive. Well, praise the Lord. But of course, you may not always have somebody with you, but laying on of hands is available. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then you have 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. It talks about there are gifts of the spirit. One of those gifts is the gift of healing. Hallelujah. And that is a, that's as the spirit wills, the Bible says, it's not something that any person can decide I'm going to just operate it, turn it on, turn it off. It is as the spirit desires and that can manifest itself, glory to God. And the individual who gets healed may not even be a believer. It might be someone, uh, praise God, who is an opponent of God Almighty. But that doesn't mean there won't be a manifestation of that. I know back in the 1990s, I was uh, asked to come to minister in Lahore, Pakistan, which then and now is still a place that is an anathema for Christians to be, a place where they kill Christians. And particularly if you dare to come there and preach publicly to thousands of people in Jesus name. But I was invited to come and after prayer, and to make this, this story short, after prayer, the Lord told me he wanted me to go. And to do just that. And so one night I'm out there ministering in the field in Lahore Park, Pakistan. There's an estimated 30,000 Muslims out there. I'm preaching on the uh, story of the woman with the issue of blood who got healed. And then gifts of healing started happening. I mean, I didn't turn it on. I couldn't turn it on. I couldn't turn it off. I can just tell you what happened. And what happened, praise God, people started getting healed out there. I mean, they got healed of blind eyes. They got, they got deaf mutes began to speak and talk and hear. And, and praise God, they even brought a woman on the issue of blood. Cripples began to walk. They brought them up on the stage and people testified about it. I mean, it wasn't one or two. I mean, God moved all over that audience and healed so many of those Muslim people so that the time came with the altar call, thousands of them, in fact, of Fast. Majority of those people then prayed and made Jesus Lord of their life to God be all the glory. Well, that was another way in which healing is delivered, that God gives it to people. James 5, 16 says, pray one for another. Uh, amen. And it goes on to say there that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. It said, over there in James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. That's another method of healing. All these different methods of healing are for different people with different situations. Praise God. Once again, God is, is a not one size fit all God. With God, praise the Lord, God's interested in ministering to you at your point of need. Why? Well, people have different work levels. People have different faith levels. 
People have different knowledge levels. So what can be foolishness for one may be faith for another. Or what may be faith for one might be foolishness for another. Amen. Now, turn to Luke chapter 4, because let's talk a little bit about what could be a foolish thing to do. Jesus, in Luke chapter 4, coming out of being in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, he's being tempted of the devil. And Satan says to him, in verse 9, he brought him, that is Jesus, to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, said unto him, if you be the son of God, throw yourself down from here, commit suicide. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee. He's even going to quote the word. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Satan's quoting the word, of course, out of context, but he is quoting the scripture. And Jesus answered and said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The word tempt there means to prove or the test. In other words, I'm not going to throw myself off this, this pinnacle down to this ground just so that I can prove I am who I am or even prove who God is, who he is. Yeah, amen. In other words, that would be a foolish thing to do. Why? James chapter 1 tells us why. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. In the book of James chapter 1, let's read here in verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, that word tested, proved, tried, that I am tempted, tested, or, or tried of God, for God cannot be tempted, tested, or tried with evil, neither does he tempt, test, or try any man. Usually we talk about that because God's not the one putting sickness and disease on you and then turning around and coming and healing you after doing it so that you could praise him. But there's something else in that script you also need to note. You don't test God. God. Amen. So you don't go and do something thinking you're going to prove something to yourself. It's like in Mark 16. It also says in the 16th chapter of Mark, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Well, what is Mark 16 telling you? In Jesus' name, the apostle Paul, after uh, they survived the shipwreck and they're sitting on the shore by the fire, and a poisonous snake comes out and, and, and fastens itself on and bites Paul. The scripture told us that then that the uh, people there sitting around him, the islanders, the natives, all said, all the men survived the shipwreck and then just to be killed here. Too bad. And they all waited for him to die. But then after a long abstinence, the Bible tells us, they noticed nothing happened to him. He just went on the scripture. He shook, the, he shook that snake off into that fire, praise God. And it didn't touch him at all. Well, he wasn't trying to prove anything. That's what's talking about Mark 16. This was a situation, unexpected, something whereby he didn't do anything. It was just a situation where Satan wanted to attack him again because Satan wanted Paul dead. But in Mark 16, there have been ministers who have went and got snakes in services to prove that Mark 16 was so. That's tempting God, were bit and died. Well, then somebody says, see, the Bible's not so. No, you didn't read all of the Bible, praise God. Not so at all. You don't do anything like that. In other words, praise God, you must be true to yourself. You must know your level, praise God, and it's okay, whatever level you are. What is the gold standard? This is what you must always apply. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, praise the Lord. Let's read here in verse 15. Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, amen. Verse 15 says this, and let the Irene, that's the Greek word for peace, the quietness, the rest, the peace. Let the peace of God rule. Amen. The word rule means let it arbitrate and let it govern. One translation says, uses a baseball analogy, let it cause the shots safe or out. Amen. In other words, in here, you have peace or you don't. There are situations where even the Bible says not to even pray for someone, praise God. I am called. My job is to lay hands on people in the name of Jesus. My, my job, praise God, is to be a pastor 
is to be a teacher in, in the apostolic ministry. My job is to do certain things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But then I still must get before God and say, is this what you want me to do? Not just launch out and do something because I decide to do it. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't have went to Pakistan that day without prayer. But because I did go to Pakistan, praise the Lord, that uh, before that very service I was telling you about, about 2 a.m. in the morning, I was having real trouble sleeping because they had, the terrorists there in town had let the word out, you're going to be dead tomorrow. We're going to kill you tomorrow. I didn't doubt it. They had just killed a couple American diplomats about three weeks before we got there. And so I'm having trouble sleeping. And then the Lord said to me, it was so plain, it almost sounded like it was audible. You know, I see he was in the room. The Lord said to me, he said, being in the center of my will is the safest place you could ever be. Oh, 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 oh. Faith comes by hearing, praise God. So when I heard that, then I relaxed, went to sleep, and I told you what happened the next day, praise God. God moved, and obviously nothing happened to me in the name of Jesus. Well, uh, praise God. It's one thing when you get a word from God. Now, of course, all of us are required to seek the face of God. The word told us in Proverbs 3, 5, to acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct your path. He will direct where you go, where you don't go. He will direct when you should go, how you should go. You seek the Lord, in other words, about everything, and then you listen to whether or not you got peace in here. Not up here. Up here is where the fear can come. But the peace in here, praise God, and you follow that peace, and that peace may be stay home. That peace may be go out, praise the Lord. But you need to find out as you take the time before God because the word tells us Jesus is Lord. What does Lord mean? It means master, but it also means controller. So he's the one who controls your steps, praise the Lord. And he, he controls you and how he controls you is your business and not someone else's business, praise God. Allow him to lead and guide you one way or other. <laughs> Amen, praise God. And when you're allowing God to do the leading, then you can't miss it. Note what it says here. Let the peace of God arbitrate. Let it govern. Let it rule in your heart or cardiac spirit man. To the which also ye are called. You are called of God to operate this way. He goes on to say, do it in one body. All of us in the body of Christ do it. And be ye thankful. Thank God that even for this situation, there is judgment available to you of what to do. Praise God. There is wisdom of God of what to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you follow that wisdom. So know your level. Now, let's come down the home stretch with this. Praise God. Amen. So, you know, the models and real data and conflicting information from doctors and scientists and you know, blue, red, all this stuff don't matter. Praise God. What, do, what does matter is what has God done for us? What did Jesus do for us? Matthew 8, 17 says, himself, Jesus, took your infirmities and bore your sickness. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, he his own self bear our sins and his body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Peter is looking back at the cross, praise God, because Isaiah and Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 said, told us he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are, the Hebrew says, cured and made whole. Hallelujah. Jesus on that cross bore coronavirus. Jesus on that cross bore cancer. Jesus on that cross bore every sickness and every disease that there is. Glory to God. And he bore it for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. He paid for your health. He paid for your healing. Now, glory to God. Walk in at whatever level. Amen. Start small. Praise God. Say so you don't have someone who, who, who has never even believed God for a headache. Try and believe God for cancer in, in the fourth, fourth degree or fourth level. In other words, you should always be using your faith, even at small things. Praise the Lord. And your faith is stronger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so that you don't wind up in a position where you have to try and do Luke chapter 6. And that is try to build a house in the middle of a hurricane. 
It's a little late to do it. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult to do it. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know this. God's will is that you be healthy, that you live long, and that you prosper. Praise God in all things. Father, we thank you for your will being that's the case. And in the name of Jesus, oh, we're so grateful about it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bearing every sickness and every disease on that cross in Jesus' name. Now, I feel led of the Holy Ghost right now. You see, in the realm of the spirit, there is no distance. And I feel led right now of the Holy Ghost for those of you who may have sickness and disease of any type, not just this virus. One of the sad things going on is that there's so much focus on this virus that they've taken the focus off all the other things that's been killing people every day. The cancers and all the other issues. And so regardless to whether or not we're talking about the virus or we're talking about some other thing with you right now, the word of God tells us that in Jesus' name, healing is available to you. And so Mark 16 says, believers shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. It said believers. And if you're a believer right now, you can lay hands on yourself. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus, praise God. And now say this out your mouth and receive it right now. In Jesus' name, I command healing power to start flowing now in my body from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. I drive out in Jesus' name everything that Satan has wrought, every sickness, every disease out of this body now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, your words said in Mark 16, when I lay hands on the sick and I'm laying hands on myself, they shall recover. So I recover from anything that comes against my body and I shall live long and prosper in Jesus' name. Oh, well, with long life, Psalm 91 said, he will satisfy you and show you your deliverance. Fear not and have no fear of death. Now then praise him that healing power is working in your body. Lord, I thank you that my brain's healed, my eyes, nose, and mouth healed, my teeth, tongue, gums healed, my voice box and voice and throat and neck and heart and liver and colon and pancreas and urinary tract and liver and lung and prostrates healed. I thank you my kidneys work at 100% effectiveness, my knees and feet are healed, my back's healed, my blood is pure, hallelujah. My immune system is super strong and drives out any Anything that comes against it in Jesus' name, I am the healed and not the sick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that's God's will for you. Receive it in your body in Jesus' name. Glory to God. There's people receiving healing right now. Glory to God. Ears are opening in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a tumor. Praise God. It's going, starting to go down right now. You'll see in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. There's a back healing that's taking place right now for someone right now. There are several diseases of, of the blood. The healing power of God's flowing in you right now, affecting your healing and curing you in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Healing power is going across this audience. Grab it. Receive it. Thank God for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, we thank you for it. Now you might say, well, preacher, how can I get in on this? <laughs> I'll tell you how. Praise God. You need to be saved. And the Bible tells you how. In the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it reads that if you would acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the highest authority of all, and that if you would believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou, it reads, shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto right standing with God. And with your mouth acknowledgement is made unto salvation or your deliverance. I really love Romans 10, 13. It reads, whosoever, that's you and whatever nation you are watching me in, whatever your background is, it said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be Save, Praise God. Then there might be some of you, you kind of fallen away from God. Maybe you decided to become your own pastor and you certainly became your own judge. You start judging other people and making a decision, this and that. This was a hypocrite, that one, whatever. But see, none of that's your business. God's not going to accept from you, well, you know, so-and-so did such and such, so I did this. No. 
you are going to stand as an individual before God Almighty, and he's going to ask you and require of you what decision did you make individually. Praise God. You need to come back to the Lord, and you need to do it right now. The scripture was written, however, for you, believer, who's fallen out of fellowship. It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we would acknowledge our sin, that is before God, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, you know, if you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, what do you do? You drop the un. <laughs> what are you? Righteousness, which means in right standing with God again. So if you're not born again or you're out of fellowship, we're about to pray and handle those matters for you. And that when we're done praying, you'll be in right relationship with God heaven be your home. Let's pray out loud. Pray with, me. pray with me out loud now. Come on. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross where he carried my sins for me. Thank you, Jesus. You were put in the grave but I believe you are risen. You are alive right now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior and as the master of my life. I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord. I accept your offer of forgiveness. Thank God I'm now forgiven. Thank God I'm now cleansed. Thank God I'm now restored. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Well, if you just prayed that prayer with me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming to your heart. Uh, amen. And hallelujah. Not only that, if you were out of fellowship, you're back in fellowship with God right now. We want to give you some free material now to help you with your new walk. We want to give you a free book we authored here called, Where Do I Go From Here? So if you're on our church online platform, you can Click the slide below to complete the form. If you're joining us on another platform, you can go to wordoffaith.cc slash salvation offer. Complete that form, and we'll be glad to send you your free, free book. Remember, praise the Lord, that on last night here at 530 service we had here in our sanctuary, Word of Faith, this morning at 8 o'clock, and then after this one at 1130, I'm ministering on a completely different message. It's called the cause of the curse. You see, the scripture says in Proverbs, the curse causeless does not come. I've looked at what's happened with public policy from United States presidents, eight of them, from Richard Nixon to this current president, Donald Trump. Every single one of them make a critical error biblically that opened the door to sickness, disease, poverty, pandemics, hurricanes, floods, and there's a biblical basis for it all. And I'm gonna explain to you why we are operating today under this curse. You can get that by going to our e-store.wordoffaith.cc and we'll be glad to send it to you. This is Bishop Butler reminding you to have a wonderful day. Never forget the fight, the good fight of faith. Congratulations on making a decision for Christ. Make sure you get your free book. Continue to come back for more teaching in God's Word. We love you so much. Thank you for all of your support to the ministry. Continue in God's love and His Word this week. See you at the next service. And remember, Jesus is Lord.